I wanted to be at Texas State. Uh, I chose to be at Texas State. Uh, I'm from Texas. That was important to me. Um, I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. You better watch out. This is Win Now or Get Bent. Episode 153. You don't already know, I'm Cap Chardello. Coming to you on Sunday, February 4th. And happy anniversary to Win Now or Get Bent. That's right. Three-year anniversary today. Three years ago today, I did the first episode of Win Now or Get Bent. And here we are. Exciting times. Even today on this episode, we're going to talk about some growth and everything with the pod and stuff we're going to do in 2024. Exciting times. It's way different than it was three years ago when it first started. But it's great to be here three years later, the past year, with the wizard, Zachary Webb. And going forward, we're gonna have we're gonna have some more teammates. So we'll get there. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about Bobcats. Lots to catch up on. Lots to catch up on with myself personally, with the pod and with the Bobcats. So we got a lot to go over, and we got a mailbag. We've got a lot. So buckle up. Let's do this, Bobcats. Uh, before we get there, we are sponsored by TGC, the Galindo Collective LLC at the Galindo Collective. Dot com. That's G A L I N D O, the Galindo Collective.com. A team of professional consultants dedicated to helping others realize their business potential through people, planning, and practice. Their services cover a wide range of areas such as business strategy, marketing, human resources, and financial planning. If you own property or a business and want to maximize its profitability, contact TGC at the Galindo Collective.com and follow their social media platforms on Twitter at TGC underscore LLC, X Twitter, whatever you want to call it. It's at TGC underscore LLC. And on Instagram and Facebook, the Galindo Collective. Shout out to Rick Galindo, a true Tech State sicko, a Texas State grad. He's been with us since the spring, all through the season. And now he's coming with us to 2024, not just sponsoring the pod, but helping us sell ad space so that we can get more sponsors uh it's a great thing rick's coming in and, and helping us doing you've seen him out there tweeting maybe you've seen him out there on uh on x tweeting about the media kit and all of that and all the stuff he's been working on so it's very exciting big things coming for win now or get bent and a lot of that is powered by the galindo collective.com thank you again to to rick galindo uh, we are also sponsored by Chilzy.com. Chilzy.com, C-H-I-L-L-Z-E-Y.com. They've got custom tumblers. Hold on, I found koozies too, not too long ago. I found some. Bang. If you're watching on the YouTube video, you can see me holding up a custom tumbler with the Win Now or Get Bent logo on it. I've got custom koozies. These seem like the, the last three that I didn't hand out, but custom koozies right here. You can see we've got our pod logo all over it. You can get whatever logo you want on these. And if you get these tumblers here, six or more of them, and you punch in Bobcats at the checkout, they're $15 a piece. Not a bad deal. Great for a work event, a family event, fantasy football event, whatever you got, any kind of event that you want to have some, some custom gear for. Check out chillzy.com, C H I L L Z E Y.com. Shout out to Dennis Redding, another Texas State grad, a true sicko himself. Thank you. Thank you to Dennis Redding for, for that was fun getting to hand out those koozies this season. And we're going to do some more things, some more fun stuff with Dennis and chillzy.com in 2024. So exciting stuff. All right. Thank you to our sponsors. Let's get to these Bobcats. Actually, first, let's get to me. Let's get to me. It's a little, little selfish open the pod with some personal news i have a new job a new title uh if you follow along on x twitter i hate that we have to keep calling it x i thought for sure i was like that's gonna go away they'll change it back to twitter but still x still x uh but on x if you've been following along there you saw that i announced i have a new job with a new company i am the scouting and college football analyst for collegefootballnetwork.com Signed my contract this week, did a lot of onboarding, even wrote my first article. That should be out soon, ranking the Sunbelt coaches. How about that? That should be fun for some of y'all. Uh, I am, so I'm I'm in the door. I'm going to start this week going and everything, and it's, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, I have been, as a lot of you know, I've been searching for a job since 
The Statesman discontinued its Texas State coverage back in November, right after the Bobcats reached bowl eligibility and jumped in the river and everything. Uh, it was it was discontinued. Luckily for myself, I picked up some writing from the San Antonio Express News on a freelance basis, still able to cover the Bobcats, able to write about Texas State. Uh, but I, I was looking for something more substantial. In the meantime, I did a lot of job interviews, looked around quite a bit. Uh, some some jobs I interviewed for I really wanted, didn't get. Other ones I interviewed for and decided I didn't want. This is one that it was it was the right fit. It was the right piece. The right opportunity finally came up. Um, if you don't know a lot about collegefootballnetwork.com, don't feel bad because they're they're relatively new. They've only been around since December 2022. Uh, they were their big company is profootballnetwork.com, and they've been around since 2019. They launched in January of 2019. Pro Football Network did. They saw a lot of growth in that time. Um, they were, they caught my eye a few years back because they were, I noticed they were hiring people right after the, in 2020 or in the, in the pandemic era, when a lot of you saw cuts, 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 they were growing the pro football network was, um, you know, cause I always try to keep an eye on, on media companies to see, you never know potential jobs down the road. Uh, so that was something I noticed. And then they launched, they decided to launch another site due to the, the success from pro football network. They launch another site, College Football Network, and it covers all 134 FBS teams, all covers all 129 FCS teams as well. It covers college football. It's college football all the time, uh, which is right, right up my alley because there's a lot of a lot of sites and media companies out there where they they spread it out and they cover lots of sports. It's pretty rare when you have a site that is just completely dedicated to one sport uh, in every single market across the college football landscape. And so that part really, really uh, appealed to me. Uh, and, you know, with College Football Network, this was their first full year, and they they surpassed their numbers and the growth and everything that they wanted to do. Uh, they even sold or they were acquired by Absolute Sports Media in March of 2023, which is a tech company, a media company, which empowered them further, gave them more support, which made them uh, open up more jobs. Here I am. So there I was able to benefit from from that growth and everything. And I hope to add to that growth and to to be a part of of this team, this growing team. It was I knew I was home when I jumped in in the second interview. And I was in, the first one was by Cam Meller, someone I've known for a while. We've had mutual respect for a while. So it was pretty great when when he was the first person that was interviewing me. It was, it was, we already, we already uh had a a, a we knew each other a little bit, you know, from Twitter right? or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, then my second interview was with Oliver Hodgkinson, uh, and he is in the UK, which is fascinating. He's he's over there obsessed with college football across the pond, which is pretty cool, pretty rare to see. He even has a his own podcast called The College Chaps. Go check that out. Um, but I knew when I when I logged on the interview, I was wearing a collared shirt, wanted to look all nice at the job interview, and he popped on and he had a Coastal Carolina shirt. And he thought it was gonna. He's trying to get a, a little rile out of me, a little sunbelt rile, knowing knowing me being the Texas State guy. But kind of knew I was in the right place. I was like, this is this is a, a a bunch of people who are obsessed with ball. They are obsessed with college ball. They're very passionate about it, uh, and they deliver great content. And I'm excited to be a part of it. Uh, that's enough about all that and all me and all that. But what what does this mean for the pod? What does this mean? Is the pod going away? Absolutely not. Pod is not going away. That was a big part of my job search was I wanted to remain here. This position I have with College Football Network is remote, uh, and I wanted to continue the pot um, in, in, in any way that, that I could. And this is a way that I can, that I absolutely can. You know, I have a non-compete agreement with College Football Network. It's part of the contract and everything like that. Uh, but that is more pertaining to writing not podcasting the personal pod like this one when now we get bent it, it is acceptable so i am able to continue to do this pod uh what that means for my day-to-day -day coverage of texas state i won't be as as hands-on as some of you are used to i won't be at every single press conference i won't be at every single little thing uh because i will have obligation for college football network i have i'll have things to do and if and if that is going to come first and I can't be at everything for Texas State. 
Uh, and it is, it is a football site. So writing football is, is something uh, I'll have to put on the, on the wayside. I'm only going to be able to do that for a college football network. That being said, I'm still here in San Marcos. I'm still going to be around as much as I can. I'm obsessed with Texas state. So I'm, I'm, how could I, how could I stay away from it? Uh, but what this means for our Patreon, where I do write about Texas state football is we are adding a writer. Now I'm still going to, I'm still going to write, but like it's football is the main thing that I should, I, I don't want to infringe on that non-compete. Um, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm at least for a while, at least feel, I feel the waters out. Uh, I'm not going to write as, as much about football, I'll still add content to their videos and stuff like that. But we are going to be adding a beat writer, which is exciting. It's exciting for me because I was very disappointed when the state's been discontinued covering uh, it, its its coverage of Texas State because I always thought to myself, there was a time where I left that position. I could leave it open for another young Bobcat, a young reporter to come in and take it. When it went away, that goes away. Um, but uh, now that there's another opportunity with the pod to do that, to to bring somebody on that I can, a, a young reporter who's hungry, talented, and wants to learn about this and somebody I can, I can almost mentor in a way where with this whole process. And that's, and our, our new, our new beat reporter, for win now or get bent, adding a teammate. A little drum roll. That was not very rhythmic, but Reese Largent. Reese Largent. If some of you know who he is, he's a Tech State student right now. Maroonandgolden.com is where he was writing last year. He is going to be writing for us on our Patreon page, and we're going to convert it to an actual website and everything. Thing, big things coming for that one. We're gonna we're gonna have fun with the Patreon page and turn it into a, a functioning news site. Uh, he is coming to us from Maroon and Golden. I have talked to Josh Brenner at Maroon and Golden. Uh, I made sure that you know we're not, not not just poaching them, not stealing them. You know we we love Maroon and Golden. We are, we don't want to make it seem like it's it's a a, a bad relationship between me and them over there because I definitely wanted to reach out and talk to them. And if they felt a certain type of way, I I would have done something different. But they didn't because they know that Reese is a very talented guy. He's a great writer. Uh, he's, he's brand new on the scene. I think this is his first year doing Texas State stuff. He'd written some baseball stuff I'd read before. Uh, he's very passionate about it. He's a kind person. He's a good person. Um, and he's somebody who's, who's willing to, to learn and he's got the writing part down. There's a lot of the nuance in and out stuff of the coverage that anybody would have to learn and experience comes with that. And I'm excited to impart a lot of wisdom on him and, 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 and help him along in this wet in this path because it's it's a strange it's a strange career path there there isn't a lot of safety nets or a lot of direction or a lot of um a lot of really experience because it's changed so much that everybody even the, the, like for myself going from i started out in newspapers and it was a different whole different game when i first started and, and uh, it is completely changed to a digital landscape and having a podcast and just everything you have to do to elevate elevate the process it's just changed but i'm excited to to go through that and and show that to reese my guy reese large and if you're not already following reese you should be following reese he is on x twitter whatever you want to call it at reese largent now reese is spelled r h y s so it's r h y s underscore largent l a r g e n t go follow him i'm gonna be i'm gonna be promoting them all on the pod all, we're gonna have him on the pod too, have him talking about Texas State, because uh, he's gonna be he's gonna be the guy with his his ear fully on the ground with some things. He and I have been we talked about this last month, and we've been, we've been kind of waiting for for the job situation to to materialize to introduce this and everything. And what a better day than the three year anniversary of the pod that the team has grown. Last year it was it was it was, first time it went around it was just me. On the two-year anniversary, it was me and Webb. This year, we have four. I'm counting Rick Galindo in there too, helping us out. So we just we keep doubling our team. What are we going to have eight by this time next year? It's it's exciting stuff. But I can't wait to get Reese started. We'll get to know Reese more very soon on the next episode. I'm going to have him come on. We're going to talk and, and get to know Reese. He's from the Austin area. He's graduating real soon. Uh, I believe this summer. I know he told me uh, it was it was pretty soon. I, I think it's this summer. Um, so he's going to be launched into the looking for a job and career field and everything. So I want to, I want to help him along with that. 
Uh, thanks again to Maroon and Golden and Josh Brenner and understanding that uh, that you know this is this is something that I think is going to be pretty beneficial for for not just us here at Winnara Get Bent, but also for Reese. Um, it's going to be a, a a really cool experience for everybody involved. So go go give Reese some love. Go check out Reese's stuff that he's done on Maroon and Golden. Go check out Maroon and Golden. Start an account. Be heard on there. I know they have a collective, Maroon and Golden Collective, and IL Collective. Uh, I'll save that. I saw there were some questions about that in the mailbag, so I'll save it for that. Um, but that's a cool deal. I know Justin there at Maroon and Gold, Justin uh, and and Josh, uh, all reputable guys. I know there's a lot of questions about how do we know about certain collectives and everything, um, but we'll we'll talk about all of that as well. But I'm excited for that. I am excited to add Reese into the mix uh, and to get and see his awesome content up on the Patreon page. Uh, and again, I'm going to be adding content to it as well. It won't just be all Reese. It's going to be me and Reese, you know, and this isn't Reese isn't some intern. He's going to be paid to do this. He's going to uh, be putting out real work. He's not getting me my coffee. He's not doing anything like that. He's going to be doing some some real deal stuff because uh, he, he's he's passionate about Texas State. Uh, if you follow his Twitter, you you can already tell that he's passionate about sports in general, but really about Texas State. And that's that's something that I I, I think this place is in a, a, a really good area as far as media coverage. Um, you have Colton McWilliams over at the San Marcos Daily Record. He's real passionate about Texas State as well. You've been seeing what the University Star has been putting out recently. We've been seeing the TV stations coming up from San Antonio and Austin, and so it, it's it's in a really good place right now. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for Texas state and, and the media coverage around it. Uh, but yeah, new job for me, not going anywhere. You know, you probably won't hear me asking as many questions at press conferences and stuff like that. Uh, but I'll still be at, at games and, and, and all that good stuff. Cause I'm around, you know, I'm in, I'm in San Marcos still being remote was, was pretty important to me. Wanted to remain around this area. Uh, so that's the, that's the big takeaway. Yes, yes, I have a new job. The pod lifts. Don't don't worry about that. Uh, I'm excited to go fully online too. You know, you have to. It's a whole different game with with print. You only have a certain amount of space you can write. Like okay, this this article can only be 600 words or 35 inches. Sometimes you have editors. They'll tell you in inches how many inches on the page in the newspaper. Um, 35 is actually way too big. But that is it. it this is a no no word count type of situation where right? i can just go out and, and write a whole lot uh and that'll be cool getting to cover football on a national national scale i've been looking forward to that as much as i love writing and covering texas state there's a lot more that can be done i'll always be obsessed with texas state i'll always put the bobcats on high I made sure to wear a good texas state sweater today uh even even i got the wind hour get hat on i haven't worn a hat in a bit wanted to wear the hat let everyone know the pod lives Texas State still still near and dear to my heart, still here with you with you sickos. Don't worry, not going anywhere, not going anywhere. Just elevating, elevating myself, elevating uh, uh, really what I can do for my family. That's the biggest part of it, you know. It's because I do. I have a I, as I've mentioned it before. I haven't talked about it enough apparently because I keep surprising people telling them I do have a son coming in in April, a little boy. We even have a name for him, Madden. Madden Michael Chardello is coming in April, April 9th, 10th. Uh, Zachary Webb, great producer here, The Wizard, his birthday is April 10th. And he was telling me I have to name him Zach if he's born on the 10th. It's not happening. Name's Madden. Uh, don't ask me how I, I pulled that off, but I did. Yeah, Madden. It's a great name. Uh, I am very, very excited for that. But, you know, I just have to do things to, to elevate my, myself and my family's life um but uh even even when that happens you know even when things happen where i i can't write it's awesome to be able to bring reese in and to uh and to and to give someone a a paid job in media even though it's just it's it's a little old podcast or anything that's something you can put on his resume where somebody else can elevate him and give him a better job or maybe i can down the road you know who knows who knows how that works out but if i can if i can help out people the next generation of, of reporters especially texas state reporters here because there's there's just not a ton of opportunity here i know from experience won't go into school here graduating here remaining here 
uh, to to cover this this team. There's just not it's not a big city. It's not a ginormous market. Yeah, Austin's there, and San Mar and San Antonio's the the other way. Uh, but it's 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 still there's just not a ton of opportunity. So uh, I'm hoping that that's something that win now or get bent can always do is the opportunities going forward it's not just uh about me on a pod talking that's how it started because that's all that's all i had you know but the more people i can add and the bigger this team we can grow uh or the bigger we can grow this team the the better it will be for for everybody everybody who's the the school getting their coverage the fans getting their content and us having opportunities to do this you know it's 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 great. It's a great uh, ecosystem that I want to I want to continue to see thrive. Um, that's enough. That's enough of all that. It was a good twenty minutes on that. That was a little more than I expected. I, I always talk longer than I expect. Um, but obviously, exciting times. Uh, we're gonna be ramping it up too here at Winnow Kip. Now, as 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 I've said, uh, oh, been searching for a job. And when I took on the Express News, I started that the last game of the season and into December, I didn't post a whole lot on Patreon. I wanted to, the last post I had there was towards the end of November. But again, these non-compete deals with these media companies can be pretty tricky. And the last thing I wanted to do was upset them, the express news. Uh, and so I hadn't, I hadn't posted a whole ton there, but that's all going to change. If you've been on the Patreon and you've, you've noticed like, man, this has been I uh, see tumbleweeds, rolling across the page because there's hasn't been a whole lot coming here that's going to change lots of good stuff coming from reese from myself from lots lots of good content even like video content we have we have good stuff planned and for those of you who are subscribed already we're going to be tossing out a free month here pretty soon uh i believe i wanted to do it for february it is february 4th i'm pretty sure i'll have to go in there and check see if we can still do it um but we want to give you all a free month and sh and shower you with content and show you that we're back and we're going to do lots of lots of cool stuff on there so apologies if you've been on the patreon and you've been looking for that content it's just been things for myself personally have been up in the air not so much anymore now we can lock in now we can start doing multiple episodes a week again maybe sorry zach i know you've been enjoying some time off but i want to i want to get you busy again bud uh but okay all right all right that's enough cleanup Appreciate all of you for your patience and tuning in and support and all of that good stuff. Let's talk about some Bobcats. First thing we're going to talk about is new coaches, new coaches. We haven't gotten to talk about some of these new coaches. We talked about Stutzman leaving uh, away. He went to San Jose State to be the offensive coordinator there. He was the wide receiver and pass game coordinator here at Texas State. And they found a new one really quick, about a week later. They announced they announced their their replacement, and I'll have to say it's a pretty good one. Wide receiver and pass game coordinator Chad Morris. I don't know why I didn't write down his his bio, but I know I was I was just looking at it. So let's pull up our guy, Chad Morris. There you go, Chad Morris. Yes, uh, won two state championships at Lake Travis, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. He parlayed that into a, an assistant head coach job at Tulsa where he met one G.J. Kinney. That was one year, 2010. He was there at Tulsa. He then took that, was the offensive coordinator at Clemson, 2011 to 2014. Uh, he then was successful there, became the head coach at SMU, 2015, 2017. Not a whole lot of success, but some fun stuff was happening, enough to get him the head job at Arkansas. That didn't work out great. Uh, don't don't set search on, on X or anything for Arkansas fans' thoughts on, on Morris. Um, yeah, but he was just there two seasons before he went to Auburn, was the offense coordinator there in 2020, went back to high school ranks at Allen High School in 2021, South Florida, he was an offensive analyst analyst in 2022 and 2023, back to Clemson, Clemson as an offensive analyst, and now Texas State puts him back on field as an on-field coach, wide receiver, pass game coordinator, 18-40 uh, and 40 record. As a as a coach at the college ranks, but he's not here as the head coach, so I'm not I'm not too concerned with that. I do love this one though at 180 and 41 as a high school coach in Texas, which you know, hey, take back Texas, get a Texas high school coach that that has a lot of cachet that people know here. Um, 
I, I like this hire a lot. I like it from a recruiting standpoint. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I always, when I mentioned the fun stuff at SMUs, a lot of the passing game was fun. So the, to have him just focusing on that, it's pretty good because there's a lot more stuff that goes into being the head coach, being the CEO of a program and everything that, uh, that it, it, that I feel when you, when you're consolidate a coach's focus and everything, it's, it's, a uh, um, especially something that they're, they're they specialized in the pass game coordinator. I, I really like Chad Morris in this spot. Uh, you get a guy who, who used to be a head coach at this level as well. Um, you get a guy who he, I know he, he played, he played ball as well. Right. If I'm pretty sure, uh, at Texas A&M doesn't look like he actually played, but, uh, he went to Texas A&M. So you get another Texas guy in staff. Uh, I, I like this one, I, especially when when it seemed like that was a bit of a, a a quick move for Stutzman to leave and you're left scrambling to replace a position. And that's a pretty good position, a pretty good coach to put in that position. So I like it. I like Morris there. And we'll talk a little bit more about why I like it because we got to talk about quarterbacks. So we'll talk quarterbacks. Uh, defensive coordinator, Dexter McCoyle. I knew when they were taking a while because it came out that Packy former defense coordinator, was going to Duke the night they won the bowl game. So I knew when it took them this long to announce a defensive coordinator, I was like, okay, something's going on. Because usually they they move a lot quicker uh, when when something's happening. So I was like, when I, and by something going on, I was like, not nefarious, something's going on. Like, okay, they already know who they've got. I mean, they're getting defensive guys to commit. They signed a lot of really good defensive guys. You're not going to do that with without a DC in place. And it seemed like Dexter McCoyle was in place. Who knows what they were working out? How much did they pay him? How much more of a raise? All that type of stuff. So uh, awesome for Dexter McCoyle. He is a, a coach on the rise. I mean, he got the Incarnate Word in 2022. Two, two years as a safeties coach. Incarnate Word at 2022. Texas State 2023. Already defensive coordinator. Former NFL player. Uh, former CFL player. Started out in the CFL, worked his way to the NFL, and then went back to the CFL when when his time was done in the NFL. So that a grinder really did what he could to to remain in the pro ranks. Six four safety, you gotta love that. I know that's a big reason why Tory Spears stayed. Uh, he's a terrific recruiter. I know that for sure. I mean, even even if just looking at uh, uh, Tory Spears, who I just mentioned, when Spavadol was let go, he entered the portal right away. McCoyle comes in, is able to convince him to come back. Especially in, and when, when you talk to Spears, he's like, it was Dexter McCoyle. I saw him, 6'4 safety. That's what I am, Tory Spears. 6'4 safety, played in the NFL. Those are his same aspirations he had. Uh, so he is, he is somebody who is looked up to with admiration uh, from other players due to his, his playing career. G.J. Kinney experiences the same thing, being a former NFL player. Um, there are, there are uh, Barrick Neely, same situation. He was a former NFL player, CFL player, like Dexter McCoyle, where he fought his fought his way through through the CFL. Um, so those guys, they they carry a lot of respect from players. When it's like, listen to me, because not only am, uh, do I know a lot about this, I have a lot of experience firsthand with it. So guys tend to listen to that a lot. So I like both of those moves. I, I'm curious to see on two fronts with both of these coaches for Morris, how much does this change the passing game? I think a lot of that depends on what the quarterback situation is going to be, which we will talk about a little bit of a teaser. Uh, but what it's, how much is that going to change? Um, because it, it, it could, it could use some improvement. You know, it is still Mac left, which at offense coordinator, a great offense coordinator calls great plays. Um, but there, there are some like mismatches and stuff like that where they could take advantages of, um at the on the outside at receiver uh so it'll be interesting to see how they change that and it'll be interesting to see from mccoyle's perspective what he does with this defense 425 is that going to remain we'll see we shall see uh i am very interested to see what his his defense will look like uh can't wait for the spring spring football that's not too far right around the corner uh, i want to get out there and and see what i can i know they closed it up pretty good last last year they weren't letting anybody see anything and given some of the the off season transgressions we'll see if they 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 lock it in again a little bit this year i can i could see that happening 
Um, but yeah, McGoyle played football at, at Tulsa. So there's that Tulsa connection with GJ. Can you also played at Tulsa on the player front? Uh, last episode, I talked about how they had 10 mid season signees, nine, I guess with, with Jane Delora, no longer with the Bobcats. Um, but they have added another one since then is committed Dion Hankins. He's an El Paso native at, from UTEP. Another guy coming in from UTEP, 45 games with the minors, 2,604 yards rushing. That's 4.8 yards per carry, 23 touchdowns. He had 701 yards in 2022 and 812 yards last season. He also had a nine touchdown season in 2020 in just seven games. Uh, he's uh, been a, a productive player all throughout his time. Seems like he only has one year left with to play at the uh, of eligibility left um but he's been real productive since then that's that's the second utep running back they brought in because in those nine mid-year sign mid-year signees that i was talking about mid-year enrollees if you will uh they they brought in another one torrence burgess from utep so now they have the miners first and second leading rusher from last year obviously they brought in barrick neely be the running backs coach for for texas state he was at utep so that played a lot, a lot into that. Uh, it's a lot of running backs. It's three running backs total they've added in the offseason, three transfers to be specific, along with Jalen Jenkins out of Washington State. He seems he's more of a uh, uh, um, a pass catching running back. He can definitely take a handoff and, and go between the tackles or outside the tackle, whatever. He he's he's a pass catcher though. Goes out and, and gets a lot of catches. Seem like that's what they were looking for with him. But that's a that's six running backs right now that they have on roster. And I should preface this with we have, and I've said this before on the pod, but I'll say it again. We've heard GJ Kenny talk about the running back position and how he uh, got a lot of if what he does from Gus Malzahn from his time being with Gus Malzahn. And Gus Malzahn likes to use five to seven running backs, according to what GJ Kenny was saying. So he does plan to use a lot. Now, injuries at running back last year prevented them from doing that. Josh Berry got hurt. Lincoln Perry got hurt. Um, they just they had a lot of guys hurt that you didn't see that that huge bulk of of running backs used. So uh, but they do have they have five guys that I, I imagine are are fully anticipating to get carries and one more who I I want to get carries, which we'll talk about that. But let's start at the top. Ishmael Mahdi. We know Mahdi. We know we know what he's done. So most rushing yards ever by an FBS uh, Texas State running back at the FBS level, led the nation in all-purpose yards. Terrific player. Uh, played a game at running back with a cast on, a club cast on one hand, and even caught a pass. I'm uh, just uh, always impressed by by Madi. I, I really do. I, I, I'm uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, Lincoln Perry, who I mentioned, he led the team in rushing last year in 2022 not this past season um but they have the two leading rushers from the last two seasons back playing this year with Mahdi and lincoln perry lincoln perry towards acl season so he didn't get to play this year but he's been very much involved with the team even in in, in an injury um so while he recovers still still around the team still very active so tells me he's going to be involved uh i just mentioned hankins Dion hankins he's a big guy 226 pounds Seems like he's only got a year left. Very productive at UTEP. Burgess, same situation. Uh, productive at, at, at UTEP. Jenkins, Washington State. Um, and and the sixth running back is Trent Lacey. Big guy. He's been on this roster. God bless him for a minute now. He's listed at 220 pounds. I know he's bigger than that, though. I know he's bigger than 220. I've seen him out there dying for this guy to get some goal line carries. Especially with Jamel Jeter. He's all done. They were using him as that goal line guy last season. Trent Lacey's right there. Although I will say, you know, Hankins coming in, he's a big guy as well. Um, so that may be the situation for Hankins, what they're looking at him for. Uh, but get get Trent Lacey in the mix. Uh, but that that is interesting. Three running backs in the transfer portal. And I, I I'm sure a lot of you are are thinking my initial thought, well, what does this mean for Mahdi? Are they are they are they getting off Mahdi? Are they done with him? What does this mean? Uh, are they are they really planning on on using all these guys? 
and I think so. I think they they do want to do the Gus Malzahn thing. They do. They had a lot of running back injuries last year, so this is some insurance for that situation. And then they also had four running backs leaving the portal: Calvin Hill, Josh Berry, Demarius Good. Uh, I'm forgetting another one, but yes, they had four running backs leave in the portal, so they had to they had to replace the ranks. So now now they have Trent Lacey stuck around. Good for him. Give him the rock. Give this guy some love. Been watching him on scout team for a while, rubbing my hands together, being like, you know, I love a good running back. A, a, a good running back. Obviously, everybody loves a good running back. I love a big running back. The way you just hand the ball and let him let him run over some guys. Let's see. Uh, but uh, I would have to imagine that that this doesn't mean anything anything negative for for Madi, but we don't know. We saw the whole Finley situation, so um it is it is very much a, a cutthroat business these days with with player acquisitions whether they leave or, or leave on their own or 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 they bring in or coaches bring in players and it forces the the player to not forces them but makes them feel a certain type of way and they want to leave you have these emotional portal entries where the guys they are they're upset by what's what's transpired from other guys they've brought in so um but no i, I think they just they're they have a real heavy running back room. That's for sure. They've got a lot of guys who have, who have taken carries at the FBS level. They have five of them uh, that are ready to go. And Trent with six, I guess the Trent Lacey, he's got to have a carry, right? I don't know. I don't know if he's gotten one in a game yet. I don't think so. You know what? You guys want to bear with me while I look real quick? I'm not going anywhere, right? You don't have anything to do. You're here listening to this pod. Let's see if Trent Lacey has a carry. Yeah, 220. He's not 220. He's not, he's so, he's so much bigger than that. Maybe not so much. I'd say like a good 230. Yeah, no career statistics. Hadn't gotten a carry yet. I'm telling you, Trent Lacey at a, at a Friendswood, Clearbrook High School in Friendswood, Texas. His major is criminal justice. Great, great stuff. Trent Lacey pod today, huh? Uh, let's talk about quarterbacks before we get to the mailbag. I'll try to go through it quick. I've already been talking for a while and there's a lot of questions. Excited to answer your questions. Been too long on a mailbag. I don't think I did one in December. So it'll be good to 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 hear from some of y'all. Um, so who is the quarterback? We all we, do I really need to to recap the whole saga that happened? You can go listen to the last two pods, but the Bobcats need a quarterback. They need one. Uh over here, if you're if you're really asking me, what do I want to see? PJ season. I'm ready for PJ Hatter, ready to unleash the beast. Put that guy out there. Let him get some snaps. Uh, I know a great producer here, Zachary Webb. He's a big PJ Hatter fan as well. We are a PJ Hatter pod. I uh, want to see him get his chance. But knowing what we know, knowing what we've we've seen, GJ Kenny do, he wants a he wants a quarterback with experience. He wants to go get a transfer and get some guys in there who are ready to go. So I'd imagine because right now it's PJ Hatter and Brad Jackson. PJ Hatter. Is a redshirt freshman. Brad Jackson's going to be a true freshman. Um, they also have Kaiser, who's a walk-on from New Mexico State. And uh they I think they have another JUCO walk-on coming in as well. Dane, Dane something. I'd have to, I'll go, I'll get that name for the next pod. Um, but they're I'd imagine they're gonna go get a transfer, maybe even two transfers to fill up this this quarterback room and get some competition going in that room. Uh and at this point, there's not a whole lot. In, in the transfer portal, a lot of guys found homes. Uh, people who are who are looking to to transfer have already moved on. Although the window does open back up in April, later on down the uh, down in spring, so it's there will there is more time to get some more guys. Uh, but there and there are still guys who are available, somewhat available, I should say. I should should preface it with somewhat available, um, especially with the very first one. I have five candidates for you concocted five transfer candidates for the bobcats i think they're going to take one if not two of of the players we are about to talk about number one's a no-brainer it's pretty obvious chandler morris chandler morris uh if you're not familiar with chandler morris former tcu quarterback he committed to transfer to north texas oh and his dad was just hired as by texas state as the wide receiver and pass game coordinator uh so right off the bat that as soon as you see that Morris, it's the first thing everybody thinks is, oh, does Chandler Morris coming with them? Is this a, a package deal situation? 
Uh, he is committed to UNT, but it is it has come out that he is not signed with UNT. He's just committed, waiting to sign till the end of the semester. Apparently, he has to finish the semester at TCU, so he can't sign with UNT yet. So he is available. He is available. I just won't be signing until later in spring. Uh, he spent his first year at OU, Oklahoma, and then his last three at TCU. Seven games last year, 1,532 yards passing, 12 touchdowns, five interceptions for Chandler Morris. Uh, seems like that would be that would be their number one candidate, considering considering they just hired his dad. Uh, you never know with that situation. It doesn't seem that he may not want to play for his dad, not necessarily because they have a frayed relationship or anything like that, but more so like a separation of church and state type deal. You never know. You never know with those situations. So um, it's something to keep an eye on, though. Definitely, definitely got to put him on the list of quarterback candidates. So Chandler Morris, there you are. Uh, number two comes to us from the great Reese Largent. This was this was awesome. This was great about t- texting with this guy and talking to him about Texas State. Uh, you 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 bounce ideas about what do you think about the quarterback situation? And this is the one he threw at me because it's somebody who's not in the transfer portal, but it's definitely somebody I think the Bobcats would consider, uh, and that would be Thomas Castellanos from Boston College. Castellanos was heavily recruited by G.J. Kinney before this season, and he decided to go to Boston College. Uh, didn't play much at Boston College, though. Went 9 for 16, passing for 75 yards. Ran the ball some, 14 carries, 120 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, so he went in there, didn't play a lot. I think it was five games. I didn't, I didn't type in how many, how many games he played. I think it was five he appeared in, though. Um, so he didn't play a whole lot in his one year there after transferring from Central Florida. Well, then the coach who recruited him there, Jeff Halfley, he's off to, to Green Bay to be the defensive coordinator. So now they have a coaching change up at Boston College. And this just happened. When there was a lot of other coaching changes, that all happened at the end of November or in December, or maybe even after, after the bowl games and national championships in, in January. This one just happened because he's going to the pro ranks. So they're, they're without uh, – so he left after the transfer portal window was open. Um, so Thomas Castellanos is, isn't in the transfer portal as far as I know. Uh, it seemed like he was, he was planning to stay. Uh, but that could change. He could enter the transfer portal when it opens back up. Maybe he has soft plans to do it already. Maybe he's waiting to see who the coach is. Maybe he's waiting to see what happens in spring practice for competition. Don't know. It is total speculation, but I will say, as I said, G.J. Kenny heavily recruited this guy. Had him visit San Marcos and everything before he chose Boston College. And using both my teammates here in this situation, Zachary Webb, great producer of this pod, he sent me an Instagram post. I think it was back in December of Castellanos. Cast, I've said his name wrong every single. I've said it different every time. Thomas Castellanos. He sent me a post from him on Instagram of of him and GJ Kinney. And in the post, I don't have. I don't remember the exact verbiage, but he he said it was like a father figure. Uh, and this was in December of this past season, not when he's being recruited by him. It's right after the Boston College season ended. Uh, so interesting, interesting there. I wonder if that's some reverse recruiting. Like, hey, come get me type of type of post, but you don't know. Uh, so they he he has a lot of respect for GJ Kinney. GJ Kinney needs a quarterback. Seems like a, a a pretty easy scenario to to put together. So shout out to Reese Largent for coming up with that candidate. Gotta gotta give give my guy props on that one. Uh, number three on the list might be my favorite on the list i think this is uh, and for its for obvious reasons uh it's jmu quarterback jordan mcleod he's a summit player of the year at, at last season for the dukes uh he's an absolute stud he's the exact kind of qb that gj kenny could maximize uh he's still in the portal as of early january uh you know i, I say early january even though i'm saying this in in early february but it's because it, I read a, a post where the portal was ending, and it was a, a local post by in the in the JMU market. I really should have had it so I could credit it. Uh, but it was saying that he's still still in the portal. So Jordan McLeod still available, still in the portal. Sun Belt Player of the Year, uh, uh, former teammate of Jaden Delore at Arizona. We don't we don't need to talk about that. We can we can power pass through that, and I will. Here we go. We'll go to the next candidate, Jordan McLeod. I think that's the the. 
my favorite of the five. But let's go to number four. Uh, Braylon Braxton. Now, similar to Chandler Morris, this is a guy who's committed somewhere else right now. He's a Tulsa transfer that committed to Marshall, but he hasn't signed. Hasn't signed yet. Committed after the transfer portal closed. Have to wait for the end of the semester. Then you can sign again. So could be still available. Not sure. Um, we know the G.J. Kenny tulsa connection. G.J. Kenny played there. Braylon Braxton played there. Uh, G.J. Kenny talks about take back Texas. Well, my guy here is from Frisco. Take him, take him back to Texas from Marshall. I will say UNT was going pretty heavy after him, and he chose Marshall. So maybe that says a lot about he doesn't necessarily will have a huge desire to take back Texas. Uh, but 19 games, eight starts at Tulsa, 1,345 yards passing, 12 touchdowns, five interceptions, 348 yards rushing with six touchdowns. Uh, and another reason why I would think he would he would be willing to not honor that commitment and switch to Texas State, Marshall has a commitment from another quarterback, another transfer quarterback, Mitch Griffiths. Griffiths, yeah, that's right, Griffiths, okay, from Wake Forest. So there you go. So they have two transfer quarterbacks committed. Maybe one's available. Maybe that one is from Frisco, Texas, and used to play the same college as the head coach. So there you go. Braylon Braxton, put him in the mix. He's there at number four. Uh, number five, I haven't seen any offers or anything for him, but I do know that G.J. King was interested in him at one point. It's Micah Bowens the second. Uh, a little bit about Micah Bowens. He was a red shirt at Penn State in 2020. He, so he didn't play at Penn State. Then he transferred to OU. Didn't play in those two years at OU. Then he transferred to Charlotte before last season. One appearance for Charlotte with one rush, minus 13 yards on that one rush, and no pass attempts. So four years in college, hasn't, hasn't done much. Has appeared in one game. Uh, it seemed like he was sacked for minus 13 yards for his one play. So he doesn't, we don't have a lot to base it on as like, how good is he really? Except when you go back to high school, he's from Bishop Gorman. A lot of you know that school. It's like a powerhouse high school in Las Vegas. Uh, and he was a four star out of, out of Bishop Gorman. So he still has a ton of potential. I know he's been on GJ Kenny's radar before. Is he back on GJ Kenny's radar? Not sure. Uh, I do know that Micah Bowens is in the transfer portal and he is not committed anywhere. So I think he's he's very much likely a candidate. I think I wouldn't be shocked at any of these five. Chandler Morris, Thomas Castellanos, Jordan McLeod, Braylon Braxton, Micah Bowens. I wouldn't be shocked at any of those one. Uh, I, I might be a little surprised if they were able to pull off two, but I, I wouldn't. I think they want to. I don't know this firsthand. I don't know who they're looking at firsthand. I do not have the inside knowledge on that whole aspect. Um, I guess I also put an unlikely candidate here as Nebraska quarterback Jeff Sims. Um, he's very much a dual threat. He's in in the in the vein of a Malik Hornsby, where his passing isn't fantastic, but man, that guy he can really take off. He's got some wheels. And maybe if they were looking to get one of these five that I just listed, uh, again, Chandler Morris, Thomas Castellanos, Jordan McLeod, Braylon Braxton, Micah Bowens, they get one of those five and they do want to shore it up with someone behind them, similar to what they did last year with Finley and Hornsby, they could go get Jeff Sims and put him behind one of these guys and have him as a Malik Hornsby type. Malik Hornsby, six rushing touchdowns last year. Uh, but I, I like, you know, Jeff Sims, he's another guy who gets bagged on a lot by Nebraska fans, didn't have a ton of success there. Uh, he even has got a really bad clip of Gus Johnson uh, kind of berating him on a broadcast where he's just like, I, I really think Nebraska should switch quarterbacks. Jeff Sims isn't doing it for him. And then right after Gus Johnson says that, Jeff Sims throws an interception, which didn't bode well for for him for counter countering that point from from Gus Johnson. But that being said, we've seen we saw that happen with TJ Finley where he's at a place and they're bagging him there. They're bagging him at LSU, bagging him at Auburn, comes here, sets the single season passing record. So I don't think too much about all of that. So Jeff Sims, shout out Jeff Sims. One M in Sims. I, I triple check that because I don't think I've ever seen that. You always see two M's. But and I think about it, the game the Sims just has one M. So anyways, that was that was the esports segment of the pod 
Let's get to the questions. I had them pulled up and it refreshed and went away. So we're going to, we're going to talk our way through this while I pull up this mailbag. I really appreciate the responses there. Lots of, lots of good stuff. Here we go. Bam. All right. All right. It's like we got about 13 to 15 of them. We're going to go through them pretty quick. I'm already getting to 50 minutes. Sorry. This is a longer pod. Been a minute since we did a pod. Had to do a lot of cleanup. Uh, and, and, and be expecting more episodes, more frequent episodes. I'm going to do the weekly thing. I like doing bi-weekly, maybe sometimes weekly because it is off season, but I like to get a good two pods out a week. We even had time during the season where we were doing three a week. We had three weeks during the season. We did three a week. Uh, but that was that was a lot. That was a lot of workflow for for two guys. As we grow the team, though, who knows? You know, get more guys in there. All right, all right. That's enough. Enough of that. Let's get to these questions. Our first one is from our good friend, our dear dear friend. We haven't heard from him in a while. He's he's very sporadic on the on these Twitter streets, these X streets. Doesn't sound as good. I'm just gonna keep saying Twitter, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it's our guy at Goose for Heisman. What's up, my guy? I know your real name. I'm not going to dox you. I don't. I think we've met in real life. I don't know. I feel like I know you, though, bud. It's great to hear from you. All right. He says, when Taylor Swift dumps Travis Kelsey and starts dating the blind salamander god, will it burn Texas State to the ground? Or will the sheer amount of chaos somehow create a whole new plane of reality where our school can act normal for five minutes? I don't even know how to digest that question. Uh, so, so the, the, okay, let's, let's set it up. So Taylor Swift, she's going to dump Travis Kelsey and start dating the blind salamander. God, will it burn Texas state due to, okay, I guess all the publicity will it just be so unbearable for Texas state will burn it to the ground or will the sheer amount of chaos create a whole new plane of reality where I guess, because everybody has a bunch of eyes on us that we all have to act normal and, uh, and do some things. Well, uh, I, I gotta say this from what I've known about the blind salamander God, he's not one to date mere mortals and, and Taylor Swift is a human being. He is, he's above that. He's above that. Uh, our, 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 our plane of existence as far as that is concerned. So I don't, I don't see that happening. I also think he has higher standards as well. If he were to date the, the uh, human race, he would, he would, uh, uh, have higher standards than that. Um, but I, I think that if, if that were to happen, uh, that would be, it'd be a ton of chaos. If all of a sudden Taylor Swift's here in San Marcos all the time, traffic already isn't great. It's already being, we're, we're seeing the residual traffic from Austin, which is, it's more and more every year. It used to be the great thing was like, oh, you know, we have 30, we're right by 35, but it's never really that jammed up. Well, the more expensive Austin gets. Of, up from the north of 35 and even in the uh, in the south from san antonio they keep getting pushed out more and more from the south into into shirts and selma and into new Braunfels. from from the north they're getting pushed into buda and kyle and they're all meeting right in san marcus so there's a lot of traffic already i feel like an old man complaining about the traffic uh i am an old man so I, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna continue to do that and, and complain but yeah no if taylor swift came to san marcos it would just exacerbate it and make it worse so i i don't want it i don't want it uh, i think the blind salamander god can do better um last i checked he was married but you know that changes that changes so who knows what the deal is with with the blind salamander god now um but you know and we still need to have a blind salamander god drawing contest that's something maybe that's some good off-season content we can work on we we tried to even like get an AI to generate it, and it kind of made it look like an Egyptian salamander. You know, you put God in, and it gave it this weird like pharaoh outfit. Uh, but yeah, blind salamander God. We haven't heard about him. We haven't had a question about him. It's always our guy Goose for Heisman, who uh, who who brings up. He always always praying at the altar of the blind salamander God. So thank you, buddy. Thank you for for jumping in with a question. I hope you're well. I hope I hope the weather in New Mexico this time of year is delightful. Uh, my guy Alonzo is up next at runner XC eight. What's up, Alonzo? How you doing, man? Always great to hear from you. Uh, my Mount Rushmore for the 2023 season. 
Oh, I remember seeing this and I'm, I, I meant to, to prep for it more, but that's okay. I can still do a good one off the top of my head. Uh, here's his Mount Rushmore for 2023. The win at Baylor, of course. The team slash cliff jumping in the river. Oh, do you mean, did you mean to put Kef and you put Cliff? Yeah, I think that's what he meant. The team and Kef, me jumping in the river, becoming bowl eligible. That's up there too. Uh, convincing bowl win. Yep. That was a great one. Still storming the field after beating Rice. Uh, I would put your last two submissions together as one. I would say the convincing bowl win and the storming the field. That's all in one. It's got to all all be in one. But I'm with you as far as all the, those three, putting those in the Mount Rushmore of the season. Um, I would say the fourth one, 77 points, even though it's Jackson State. Uh, that was still fantastic to see 77 points. Uh, it, it got inversed and handed back to them by Arkansas State later in the year. Uh, 77 points handed them by Arkansas State. Uh, but that's that's the one. I, I would put 77 points up there. Uh, I'd put the Trident up there, the Nevada game, that comeback win. The 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 van guy stole the Trident, and uh, and a comeback ensued. That was pretty incredible, man. I, I don't know. I don't know which of the the 77 point one or the Nevada one, because um, even the ULM win. Remember the water bottle gate where the the player for ULM threw the water bottle into the stands. Broke, broke a fan's nose, allegedly, I should say, based on posts on social media. Uh, that one probably wasn't as fun. It was a fun game because it was a one-point win, but uh, I the 77 points stands out the most, but it's really hard to go against Trident. That Trident, man, that was, that was great. What a season. 2023 season uh, was absolutely remarkable. Um, that, that's why I'm... I'm really glad. I know I've talked a lot about my new job and everything like that. I was really glad that if if my first or my last season, uh, who knows if it's last ever, but the last season of, of my consecutive run of of being the beat man for the Bobcats for over a decade uh, was was if that was the the end of that that chapter for me where I'm on where I'm on the beat and I'm there all the time. I'm always going to talk about the Bobcats. I'm always going to be writing about Bobcats and stuff like that. But if that was the last season where I was the beat man, the man on the beat, uh, then what a season it was. What a what a nice punctuation to all of that. Um, that's a fun one. That's a fun one to think about, Alonzo. I appreciate you, you asking about the fun times of last season. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll recap the Mount, Mount Rushmore roof pass before I go to the next one. Baylor win. Got to put it right there. Um, I'm going to say 77 points. Although the Trident, now, nah, you know, we're going to put the Trident because the Trident, it got, it got all that national attention. That was pretty cool. I feel like that put Texas State on a lot of people's maps. It's hard to do the 77 points, but maybe that, that gets negated by Arkansas State, 77 points. So there we go. We'll disqualify that. So we'll do Baylor. The Nevada game, Trident game. Uh, we'll do bowl eligibility, jumping in the river, that sixth win. Uh, and then we'll have the bowl win, storming the field, all of that. That's a great Mount Rushmore. I like that a lot. I like that one a lot. That's fun. Honorable mention, GJ Kenny getting the getting the raise. I like I like that one too. Uh okay. Appreciate you again, Alonzo. This one's from my guy Miguel. At the Lunar Cowboy, what a great handle that is! Shout out to Miguel. I know Miguel. I've I've met him, rowdy rowdy sicko over there. Uh, with the announcement of McCoyle to DC, what kind of defense are we looking at running? Also, are we looking at PJ to be the starter for the spring? Two young guys leading the spring game. Uh, you know, I guess I've already talked about both of those in the lead up to it. Uh, I, I don't I don't know exactly what type of defense McCoyle is going to bring in. I will say this, he has been a collegiate coach for two years after, after his pro career was done. Uh, and both of those years were under Patkey. And something I, I have noticed is that coaches seem to honor what the, their experiences have taught them as far as a, a mentor 
or someone who is a, a above them that they're learning from, such as Pat Key was to McCoyle. Um, for Pat Key, that was Manny Diaz, who he followed to Duke. That's why he's at Duke now. Uh, but that system, that four two five, that real aggressive, go get the quarterback and let your DBs play man coverage, that was adopted from Manny Diaz. So I would imagine McCoyle does the same thing. He adopts the same same style of defense. So I'd expect that four two five to be back. Um, and what was the other part? Oh yeah, quarter quarterback, right? Quarterback situation. Uh, I would say it would. I don't expect them to get a transfer in before the spring. It's just not going to happen. Uh, you, you, I mean, it's it's a, the, mainly because the portal is closed and they can't, so they can't bring him right to the spring. So PJ had her. PJ had her in the spring. Let's go and let's give him. Let's let's give him a shot. Let's let this guy do it. All right. There's that one game he snuck in there, the Jackson State game. We're just talking about the 77 points. He got in there in the end. That touchdown didn't count. That was still a 60-yard touchdown run. And it was impressive. It was fun to watch. And I, I want to see PJ get a shot. So we'll see. We'll see. I I'm here for PJ. But otherwise, it's those those five candidates I had earlier, I guess, because the question is about quarterbacks. So I'll go through those candidates, uh, transfer candidates out there. Chandler Morris, Thomas Castellanos, Jordan McLeod, Braylon Braxton, and Micah Bowens. I even put Jeff Sims on there as an unlikely candidate, but you never know. Um, but we'll see a lot of, a lot of questions. We'll have to wait for the spring to be answered. Uh, thanks, Miguel. Appreciate you for that one. This next one is from Josh Brenner at TXST for life. Second time we've mentioned Josh, this pod maroon and gold.com maroon and golden.com. Shout out to Josh, my guy, Josh, uh, defensive coordinator, Dexter McCoyle, buying or selling can he recruit? I'm buying. I like it. I think it's somebody that I imagine. Oh, I hope this isn't rude to say, but I imagine they got him for a discount because he hasn't been a coordinator before. Usually a coordinator position comes with a big pay raise, but he's a young coach, only only two years of collegiate experience, uh, both times as a safeties coach, one of those times at an FCS school. I imagine they didn't have to break the bank to pay him. I, I, I assume they would have to. They would, Morris was probably not cheap. I imagine the same thing for Barrick Neely. Um, so there is that it is almost a, a way for him to prove it. It's almost they're I think they're buying, buying low on a great investment with Dexter McCoy. Cause I think he's, he is a rising star. That star rose probably quicker than he may have even anticipated due to extenuating circumstances. The defensive coordinator left, they got to fill in that spot and boom, he gets moved in. But to me, I like it a lot. I think it's great. I think there might be some growing pains the first year, as far as being his first year, as a coordinator and everything, uh, but I'm I think it's 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 worth that risk because I think the the reward far outweighs the risk of moving up Dexter McCoy, uh, and I like it. I like the continuity of of keeping guys in the system, moving them up. You know, you don't always have to. the The answer isn't always outside of the room. You know, sometimes you just need to to give a young, hungry guy who's willing to prove himself, give him that opportunity. So I'm all for it. I like I like Dexter McCoy a lot. I've I've interacted with him quite a bit. Um, so I, I'm I'm all for it. Um as far as can he what was the second part? It was recruit, right? Can he recruit? Yeah, he can recruit. Um, you know, he was able to bring his his both his safeties over from Incarnate Word. That tells me they they really like him and they've wanted to play for him, you know, Sean Holton. Um, and he was able to convince Tory Spears to stay. He was able to. We didn't see him, but we saw Darius Jackson. We did, he he transferred over from Mizzou, a pretty good safety. We didn't get to see him go out there because he had a season-ending injury before it all happened. Um, but yeah, he had some. He he recruited some pretty good players, some pretty good DBs. They had a lot of DBs out there. They also had a lot of DB injuries. Um, so, but but a lot of the those new guys were were brought in by by Dexter McCoyle. So I like it. I do. I wasn't sure exactly how I felt at first when I saw it. Uh, you know, you'd ever because but I had to I had to evaluate the situation and look at it from from their perspective. Why why would you why is this the move? Why not go and, and get someone who has, you know, 10 years of, of defensive coordinator experience and and all of that? But I think it goes back to continuity and and uh empowering young hungry people on your staff and giving them more opportunities to to grow and do great things so i like it i like dexter mccoy i like mccoy and morris i think they're both really good hires i don't know morris i've never talked to him but i i think both of those were were 
really good hires for for in a pinch you know i mean your dc leaves and then and then the pass game coordinator leaves you you you're i wouldn't necessarily say either one is like an upgrade but neither one is a downgrade either i think it's it's to be determined for those situations as much as uh it, but i think it will trend more to either being an upgrade or lateral i don't think it's a it's a downgrade with either of those not upset with that at all um a great question josh thank you appreciate you guys at maroon and gold and check out the mng collective go check that out everybody support support these texas state athletes oh my guy robert garcia congratulations on your nuptials buddy hope you and the wife are well are you having fun saying wife that was that was that was the craziest part to me when i got married i was like oh my wife my wife said i you're like who is this talking right now uh shout out shout out to you robert you you and you and the wife i hope you two are doing very very well may the honeymoon last the rest of your lives uh how was taking stats for the spurs oh thanks this is nice this is nice of you to ask about this because i do want to brag about it uh how is taking stats for the spurs and working with the goat of spurs radio yes sir bill shoning shout out to the goat bill shoning uh they sign you on full time nah nah that was a lot of me joking on twitter next but uh the second part is will jdl with jdl gone do you think hobert transfers out as well uh i'll start with the the second one first and we'll go back to the spurs question because the, the that part this one is more important the hobert one right when so i you know i realized that i i prefaced last episode with being like there might be more in the portal we don't know and i kind of left a little hint and then as i was going through the pod i was like ah we don't need to put too much out there but i do know that that there is plenty there's a lot of thoughts that that holbert might not be happy with the whole J, he knew jdl before and that whole situation uh so there was there were some early indicators that he might be in the portal he might be he might be going to san jose state he might be going where jdl goes um but this is not from joey hobert himself you know i reached out he didn't respond which is totally totally fine uh it's it's he so this isn't anything coming from him so i wouldn't be too concerned about it uh i think i, I think a lot of it's going to determine who they get a quarterback and what how uh his relationship is with morris when he gets to when he meets him and talks with him so um but yes he is on my list of of i'm nervous they may transfer list i i have one of those and it's just there's two guys on it it's just hobert and Madi, you know i don't think but i'm more concerned about hobert than Madi. um but you know bringing in a lot of a lot of running backs is you know how does he feel about this we saw how finley felt about other quarterbacks coming in so um but yeah yeah so there's that's something to monitor definitely i mean there is there is uh two people that he, he had a previous relationship with that he uh cared for a lot that are now gone so it's always something to monitor something to keep an eye on uh taking stats for the spurs that was great uh it's i'm still i mean you know i'm still gonna be doing it somewhat during the season uh I, part of this is gonna sound strange but part of me hopes i don't keep doing it because i'm only i'm only doing it because someone is is very sick and they're in the hospital who's doing it before i want to air out all their their personal information um but it it might be looking like i am going to be helping out when when i can in the season understudy understudy statistician for spurs radio it's a lot of fun it's great to sit next to bill shoning and hear him do his thing uh watch him drink he drinks about four or five teas throughout the the broadcast it keeps his voice clear and everything i'm like sitting there taking notes like ah, man, i need to drink some tea before the pod okay uh it's it's great to to watch his process uh, i appreciate his patience with me when the first night or two i was figuring out exactly what i was doing um but it's it's pretty cool it's it's uh, i've been a, a spurs fan since i was in the fifth grade i moved to san antonio in 1998 great time to jump on that bandwagon they, they won the championship the year after it's like this is impeccable timing for myself didn't even have to wait um but the uh, so i've always i've always had a a a kinship with with the with the spurs 
Um, I mean, even when they won the championship, and especially with the Shonings, Bill Shoning, but I'm also very good friends with his son, Carl Shoning. He does play-by-play -play for UTSA and Incarnate Word and the Austin Toros, uh, Austin Spurs. I still call them the Toros, the G League, G League affiliate in Austin. They used to be the Toros. Now they're the Austin Spurs. They're the Austin Toros when I was an intern there. That's another story. Um, but uh, even back in 2014, when the Spurs won the championship, I was very much blessed by the Shonings, Bill and Carl, to accompany them to the Spurs parade. And I just wasn't, I wasn't at the parade, the Spurs parade. I was in the Spurs parade. As a lot of you know, when they do that parade, they go down the river walk uh, and they do a, a whole deal. And boat number, boat number 13 of 16 was the media boat. And I, I was in that boat tossing out shirts. It was pretty funny. We're going down, we're going down the river walk. We go down a bend, the corner, you know, and there's people all standing along the bank and the people around the bend can't see you yet. And they're all cheering. They're getting excited because the first 12 or so boats they saw, it's like, oh man, there's Tim Duncan. Oh, is that Monty Ginobili? Oh, hey, that's George Gerwin. They've even got retired Spurs. And then along comes boat 13 with just like me and, and <laughs> Bill Shoning and, you know, just assorted media people and the cheering just kind of stops like, oh, okay. Then we hold up shirts. We're tossing out shirts. You want a shirt? Oh, yeah, they get excited again. You toss them a shirt. Uh, it was an amazing experience, though. Obviously, I saw a ton of players was around that whole whole situation. Uh, but it was it was very cool. And it's even 10 years later, the Shonings are still hooking me up with with cool things at, at Spurs games. You get paid to go to a Spurs game and have a great view and just take track of stats. It's like I'm sitting here having to write down who's scoring. I'm like in my if I'm watching a game, I'm already wanting to know who's scoring and everything. So it's, it's a fun way to watch a game. That's for sure. And it's, and it is a lot of fun. Don't worry about that being full-time. That's, that's college football network. That's my main, my main precedent. Luckily the non-compete doesn't involve taking stats at games. So I'll be able to continue doing that, but yeah, a lot of fun, a lot, a great opportunity. Um, I do hope for a speedy recovery for the person I am an understudy for. Uh, but appreciate that one, Robert. Great question. Always love talking about the Spurs. I know a lot of you don't want to hear it, so I avoid it. But Wimby, he's coming. Y'all, y'all prepare. Don't worry about it. They have ten wins this year. Ten and forty is their record. Don't worry about that. Just forget about it. Uh, next one we got is from Logan, my guy Logan. What's up, Logan? Met him and his wife this past season at a game. Uh, when is the spring game, and when is the schedule release? Spring game is probably going to be, I'm saying probably because I don't know for sure. So this is a guess. I'll have that info for you soon enough. Or my guy Reese will. Reese Largent. Break that news, Reese. There's your first challenge, buddy. I'll teach you. I'll teach you some of that good stuff. But spring game, probably like April 16th, around that, around middle April um, is, is usually when it starts. Spring ball will probably start in the middle of March, and then it'll go into the middle of April. That's what we saw last year. It's what we've seen years prior around here uh and then schedule release that'll be during spring practice is when they'll release that schedule so uh I, I, we'll probably get through february and into march before we hear that spring before we hear the the full schedule you know with the dates and all that we know the opponents we know they have seven home games uh, uh we know they have a, a neutral game as well against sam houston nrg i'll be there uh next one we got at baseball nut what's up my guy baseball nut 46 two questions delora gone can we all just move on yeah yeah let's move on we'll get past it the continuous coverage is disgusting oh and most if not all do not know half of any part of the story and are speculating huh. you know i don't know about that on my end i, I read that whole civil case that's okay uh and two is patreon going by the wayside we haven't seen anything since november yeah i, I kind of uh reese I'll, I'll answer the second one first but reese reese large and coming in is going to help me with that patreon we're going to be adding lots of good stuff so hang hang in there hang in there with the patreon good stuff coming uh delora gone can we move on yeah because they made the right decision kind of talked about the last one even though you're saying can we move on and not talk about it while asking me about it is a little bit you know, see where I'm going there. Uh, but it's, it's, they, 
they moved on from the, he withdrew, which meant they moved on from the situation themselves. And they, they made a mistake by bringing him in. They paid for that mistake by, by public, public perception went down quite a bit. Uh, and then they also lost a quarterback in TJ Finley. So they paid for their mistake. Then they corrected the mistake by getting Jaden Delore to withdraw from the school and not play here. Um, but and again, they they were punished in that way as well. They lose two quarterbacks, and they took a huge public relations hit. Um, so, for myself, I know I'm willing to move on. I'm willing. Yeah, it was it was a hiccup. It was a pretty big hiccup. It's not like a whoops, whoopsie daisy. You know, it's a pretty pretty big mistake they made. Uh, but it was it was about a one week saga. It was like nine days, and so if I really think about G.J. Kinney. When did he get here? Like December 2022. Um, so we're 52 weeks in a year. What are we about 70 weeks into his his tenure? Maybe less than that. 60 weeks now. Yeah, but maybe 60, 60 to 65, somewhere around there. And he and in those 65 weeks, he had one bad one, one bad week. You know, maybe you can talk about some losses during the season where there is a bad week in there too. So, so we'll we'll we'll. You know, maybe there's, it's, uh, I'm being a little lenient by saying he had one bad week, but he had one, one week where people were really scratching their heads and going, huh, what is that? What is he doing? Why'd you do that? Uh, and instead of being stubborn and leaning into it and sticking with JDL, he, he, they moved on, they moved off of him. He corrected that mistake. He made a mistake and then he corrected the mistakes. Young coach, young coaches make mistakes. He's all ball. He's got blinders on. Sometimes you, when you're all ball and you've got blinders on. You're not thinking about what the public public uh, uh, perception is of some of your moves and uh, some of the people you bring in. So I, I I am willing to forgive that and move on from that because he's had 60 other weeks where he's batting a thousand. He struck out there, struck out real bad. It was a bad strikeout, um, but he has moved past it. He is is uh, I like the the hires he's made coaching wise. They're still out there recruiting hard over 30 recruits they've got 30 over 30 they have signed i should say because what was it 22 23 they signed in december another nine not too long ago they're definitely going to be bringing in more uh when with signing day coming up on wednesday that's coming up so that's why we're going to talk more about recruiting and everything this week trust me with with signing days on wednesday i can't believe we're an hour and what 16 minutes into the pod and i'm just now bringing that up but signing day is this week uh so we're i i am i'm willing to for forgive gj kenny for that especially him correcting the mistake that's the biggest part is if we're still we're going into spring and we're still having to talk about jdl then the, then you, you you can't help but talk about it um because he's still there but now he's not there we can we can move on whenever quarterback he's gonna go get a quarterback or two We've seen, we saw him do this last year i brought this up on on the last pod we saw him do this last year he got malik hornsby then after spring practice, you got TJ Finley. So he he that was two last year that he was able to do. I, I imagine he's got a few aces up his sleeve. GJ Kenny, this is what he does. He's gonna go out, he's gonna go find some guys. So yeah, totally. I'm willing to move past it. I don't need to bring up JDL. I wouldn't say the coverage was disgusting. The constant coverage was disgusting. Uh uh, I would say it was necessary for given the circumstances. Uh, I can get it if you feel a certain type of way. If you're thinking about it from a competitive standpoint for this team, it did weaken them competitively with no quarterback. I, should, I say no quarterback, but they have quarterbacks. They're a quarterback who hadn't hadn't started a, a collegiate game, not not in that in that quarterback room. Um, it did weaken them there, and I can understand feeling a certain type of way as a fan looking at the team. Um, but the 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 coverage was was necessary, you know. So. Sorry, sorry, it was disgusting. Disgusting coverage. You want disgusting? Go, go, go read that, uh, go read that civil suit. Okay. That, that's what was disgusting in the whole situation. Not, not the coverage. I commend the coverage. I commend the coverage of the University Star specifically. Uh, Carson Weaver there, uh, great team there. And I know there were m multiple people involved with that. Um, so I refute that, but I still love you, baseball, and that. You sicko. Keep it, keep it coming. I'll see you in the spring. I know you'll be out there.
All right. My next one's from my guy, Jim Johnson at TXST Johnson. Shout out to Jim Johnson. Met him at the bowl game before the bowl game. Actually, it's great to great to shake his hand. Uh, does PJ Hatter get a legit shot to win this job, or do we have another Ty Evans situation looming? Uh, interesting to to compare it to Ty Evans. Um, I think it's a little different because Kenny inherited Ty Evans, uh, and I think, but it's not different in the same sense that I don't think GJ Kenny wants to gamble on somebody who has he hasn't seen play in, at this level and has experience it seems like that's been his his forte is for at least his first two seasons as head coach in Carnot at Texas State reload go get a guy who can get in there and go more so than than develop and and let this guy grow let him make mistakes out there on the field he doesn't want mistakes he wants to win now we like that here win now or get bent name of the pod so I understand it uh, I, I'd be willing to grow with PJ though. And I think given how the portal works and everything, he's, he's going to be solo or, you know, him and Brad Jackson, he's going to have a good shot in the spring. So let's see what he can do in the spring. If he can really dazzle and, and show off some stuff, then, then maybe they, they reassess, but I think they are still going to get some more as we discussed earlier. Good stuff. Jim Johnson. Hope you're doing great, man. Appreciate that question. Uh, this one is from Curtis Spillman. What's up, Curtis Spillman? Curtis Spillman 2. Are you allowed to explain Texas State NIL? There's Victory Star NIL, the Maroon and Golden Collective, etc. I think sickos want to know which NIL is legit and if it goes to the football team or is spread out to others or just how it all works. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this one up. And as I'm reading the question, I definitely want to, to have more expertise explain this more so than i can because i can kind of give you the layman's terms of what it is and i will um but yeah i want to have uh, i know you mentioned mg collective justin schaefer over at maroon and golden I was just talking about josh brenner earlier i know this is that's a venture that they are putting on uh, i definitely want to have them on to talk about that uh and specifically justin justin i have talked about him coming on before because i too have questions because it is it is um how do we how do we know it is actually going to the athletes is this where i should donate is this a safe area to donate um and i think vetting it is important i will say the two that you named i know for certain victory star in il that is one that the school supports the school is is uh um, um it's one the school trusts it's one that they when i when i before this last year's season when i said hey i want to help uh direct people to some sort of nil not not a, i have not I've never been paid by an nil we will never be paid by nil that's not what it is but we will as an information basis because you guys were asking where where do i donate for nil i want to ask the school they pointed us to victory star nil um and since the the season ended we've seen m and g collective the maroon and goldens one those are reputable individuals as well um so but i will that's one that we need to have a good full episode on of NIL and really talk to some people and figure out what, what, what this whole means. Cause I, I, I gotta say this, it's going to be weird with the shakeup of this whole NIL situation in the next few years, it's going to look different. I think there's going to be more like contracts for players and they're going to get cuts of the TV deals instead of these NIL contracts from these outside third parties. Um, because who knows what kind of litigation they're opening themselves up for and, and all this kind of stuff down the road um but because it, it is it's very it's very fluid and very changing and i don't want to say the wrong thing to you curtis so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make this promise to you curtis i'm gonna have someone else come on not someone not just one someone else but just gather some more expertise on this so that we can all have a, a better understanding of what we're looking at but appreciate that curtis it's very important nil is very important uh next up we have alex can at Alex can two seven. What's up, Alex? How you doing? My guy, who are your favorite QB transfer prospects? And do you think landing Jordan McLeod would be possible? Alex, 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 you're a, you're a very perceptive man. You already knew what segment I was going to prepare before I even prepared it. So great job. Yeah. McLeod, he's my favorite one. I put him third on that list of possibilities. Uh, I have I have uh, uh, Chandler Morris above him, Thomas Castellanos above 
above them as well. But McLeod is my favorite one. That's the one that that if they can make it happen, make it happen. That would be exciting. Um, but yeah, I answered that one earlier, so I'll, I'll move past it, Alex. But I appreciate it. That's a, that is a a good question. I'll get you to you know whenever next time I'm coming up when I'm doing prep when I'm coming up with segments, I'm gonna hit you up, Alex. I'm like, what are you thinking? What should I do for this episode? Uh, this one's from Angry River Cat at Angry River Cat. Love that name. Great name, Angry River Cat. What are your preseason predictions and hot takes for baseball and softball? What is the base expectations for fans moving forward in football? Is there a chance for major turnover in basketball? What, in your opinion, is missing from both basketball teams this year? Let's go, Angry River Cat. Uh, I'm going to lightning round it. But I do like all these questions. Preseason predictions and hot takes for baseball and softball. Uh, I Baseball, 18 seniors coming back. Um, they, they're going to be hot. I'm so ready for baseball. I'm so ready for Omaha. That's right. I want it. I'm ready. I'm going to fly out. I'll do the whole deal. Like, let's go. I'm ready. I, I think baseball is going to be great. Uh, I think that what we got two years ago with that Stanford win and seeing some of that stuff in the Super Regional, that was just a taste of what we can get. Admittedly, don't know a ton about softball. Sorry. I'm going to I'm gonna have to defer on, on that one. Um, but I'll learn more and I'll come back. How about that? What is your base expectations for fans moving forward for football? Base expectations. Uh, I, I don't know what you mean by base expectations. What am I expecting out of, out of the fans in the fall? An increase, at least, uh, at least the same. Uh, we, we saw a 20% increase in attendance last year. Bring it up more. I expect that once you have a winner and you win the bowl game and, and things are pretty exciting, you're going to have fans coming out. I know the, sorry, baseball, not I'm going to bring it up, but the JDL situation, notwithstanding, I don't think there's going to be a lot of residual effect from that as far as fans to the stand and as far as support when the season comes. I think there's going to be enough time removed from that situation, the situation that happened in January to when the season starts at the beginning of September. That's enough time. That's enough time where it's it's people are going to be okay and they're and especially if they go out and they get another quarterback and and things are are looking better um so that's my base expectation is that they're they're going to be rabid wild crazy sickos like they always are and they're gonna they're gonna show up this year and there you go how's that uh where is there a chance for a major turnover in basketball is, I'm sure you're talking about coaching change. They have struggled this year. They struggled last year, although they have won their last two games. I really need to talk about basketball, um, but it's been depressing. It's why I haven't. They've they've uh, they've underperformed. I felt like they recruited really well and they got some really good players in there and they've underperformed. I know they had some injuries, so they only had eight guys on the roster for a bit, um, but it's still uh, the, the, this team should be better. Um, last year and this year this team this team should be better and i think that I, I don't think it's time to move off from tj yet after this season uh, i think if you have another repeat next season where it's three straight seasons of of this and there's not a ton of signs of improvement then that needs to be considered very very much so um but i don't think that happens after this season i really don't what in your opinion is missing from both basketball teams this year Gosh, consistency, continuity. I think they're both kind of suffering from the same problem that their leading scorers left last year. And now nobody knows who the leading scorer is. It changes from night to night. Sometimes this player thinks they're the leading scorer, so they they elevate their game. And other nights, it's another player. Uh, it's just having that consistent, the uh, consistent leader of going in there and knowing like this is this is where we're going to get our fifteen to twenty points tonight from this person. The rest of us were were. We're getting in there, getting in the mix, but that's that's the the bread and butter. They're both both sides are suffering from that. Um, seeing Davion Sykes come on a little bit for the men's team, which is which is always uh, just great, especially given his lineage here at Texas State. His pedigree, I should say. His dad played here. Um, so but yeah, that's that's my that's my opinion. Is they're missing? There's they're missing that, and until that emerges. The, the rest of the team can fall into place. There's a, there's a vacuum uh, at the leadership positions and for both teams. Not, co not necessarily coaching. I don't, I'm a big Coach Z fan, personally. I like Coach Z a lot. Uh, so I'm, when I say that, I mean amongst the players for the, the leadership. 
Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Angry River Cat. Appreciate you asking about non-football stuff. I really gotta gotta get in there, especially like I was talking about new job, the non-compete. Football is in, they can't write about football. You can write about other sports though. So let's get in there. Appreciate you again, Angry River Cat. This one is for Hatter for Heisman. Let's go. Let's go, buddy. Yeah. Oh, it gets better. His handle is at Bobcat Sicko. I say he, their handle at Bobcat Sicko. Hatter for Heisman. I, I, you know what? There you go. And I had to, I had to make sure I was following that guy and I wasn't. So I am Hatter for Heisman. Um, D coordinator would have been my question, but that got answered this morning. Did we ever get more specifics about why JDL left? Listen, baseball night just asked me not to bring this up. Okay. I can't. It's disgusting. It's disgusting coverage. I don't want to disgust you. Please don't be disgusted, but yeah, no, I don't have, I don't have the exact, I've heard that it was GJ Kenny's call. I didn't hear that from Kenny. Uh, this is very much rumor, but I did hear it was his call. You see the, he saw the blowback and decided to back off it for, and for that, I, I respect that, but it was, it was the school's call. It wasn't, it wasn't Dolores call as far as I know. Um, but yeah, pretty quick answer for you, Hatter Friesman, but love the account. I appreciate everything about it. Uh, my guy Moose at Jimmy Roth 24 just says, love it. This in response to the mailbag. It was, it wasn't a question. We're still going to read. We'll shout you out. Moose shout out to Jimmy Roth. He loves it. I'm gonna call you McDonald's. I guess it's loving it. There is no I N G on the love. Uh, this one's from Ray L W. Our guy, Ray, we've heard from Ray before. What's up, Ray? At rdub underscore 35. What, if any, potential fallout comes from the QB debacle? Specifically, are there any new names that could enter the transfer portal that have previously committed to staying? I think we've we've talked a lot about this, uh, especially with the with Holbert potentially being in the portal from this whole situation. Um, uh, names that, that could enter portal, he's, he's on top of that list. I brought up Madi, but for different reasons, and I don't necessarily think that's even going to happen. It's just we're talking about because they're bringing in other running backs. Um, but Hobart is the one who, who's who's the only one really on that list uh, as concerns from from people who aren't aren't too ecstatic about that whole situation and how it transpired, which is understandable. You know, what I mean, it's uh, it is what it is. But we haven't heard anything yet, so I mean, I guess that kind of that somewhat bodes well. Um, but yeah, that would be, that would be the biggest fallout aside from, from Finley leaving and Stutzman leaving. Those, those are two big dominoes in it. Again, I'm sorry, baseball on that. You know, you're disgusted. We'll, we'll stop. We'll stop right now. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's the biggest one to, to keep an eye on Ray is, is Joey. I hope he stays Joe dirt, man. Guys, a lot of fun. No gloves catching all those passes. A lot of fun watching him. Tell you what, I'll tell you who's got an amazing story is his dad, Billy Joe Hobart. And you know, I don't know why I bring these things up an hour and a half into a pod. Uh, but so his dad went to Washington early 90s. Uh, he he went, in, I think it was Brunel, Mark Brunel, he went in for uh, Washington, got all the way to national championship. Brunel didn't play in it. I think that's I, I may have that wrong. Sorry if I do. Um and he, so he plays in the national championship. He's the starting quarterback. And they win. They win the national championship. And he's, you know, somewhat of a hero after that. Uh, he hadn't, didn't play the, the whole season except the national championship game. But then he goes into the next season and he's the starter. Uh, gets them 9-0. and They're cruising. They're doing great. Billy Joe Hobart, first off the name, Billy Joe Hobart. Awesome. Uh, Washington. He's from the state of Washington. Um has them nine no, but then it comes out that he took a fifty thousand dollar loan. Uh, you know, it's back in the archaic days before NIL and all that. So this was a big deal. His eligibility is immediately revoked. All these bad things happen to Washington. Uh and and it's it's you know a lot of like a two year ban and they have to get rid of some wins and that whole deal. And so it's pretty pretty upsetting, you know, but dude was was balling out of his mind and then that happens but that was enough to to at least get to the nfl for a little bit played for my raiders for a while four or five years uh went to the bills for a little while um 
you know, was a hard partier, partied a whole lot, but then uh, was born again, changed his life, turned his life around while he was in the NFL. It's been that way ever since. Um, I, there's, there's a, I don't, I don't know how funny Billy Joe Hobart finds it, but it's, it's funny to look back on now when he was still in his partying ways and he left the Raiders and he goes to the bills and he was competing for a starting job with two other guys. And he'd been there for four weeks and he, he had, uh, admitted to a reporter that he hadn't even opened the playbook yet. And so he was promptly let go soon after that. I think that and it might've been the beginning of him changing his ways and everything, but uh, pretty, pretty cool story. Pretty fascinating story for, for Joe, Billy Joe Hobart, national champion, whether the NCAA vacated or not, it counts here. Okay. We're going to count it. Um, and then, and then was able to, to play in the NFL for a while. Very cool stuff. But yeah, there's, there's Billy Joe Hobart. Sorry. I went off on a tangent on that. Talking about, talking about Hobart. Um, uh, we got one more question. We'll wrap this up. It's from Kevin Muth at KMuth74. With the announcement of the DC, my top two goals for him are one, improve getting off the field on third and long. Okay. Two, minimize the stupid and costly penalties, especially in critical situations. I think two is two is my number one. Uh, and then three, what would be your third to round out the top three? Uh, improve getting off the field. We'll just we'll start, we'll we'll talk about yours and then we'll we'll add one. Uh, improve getting off the field on third and long. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and that would be that is almost the the issue with with man coverage is there there is a little bit of a weakness on those third and longs. You can take advantage of certain mismatches and get those those fifteen yards or whatever the third ten yards, fifteen yards, whatever the long is in the third and long. Um, so that will be that's what I mean. It'll be interesting to see what McCoyle will do four two five man coverage are we going to see that i would imagine so you know his, his tutelage was under patkey and that's what patkey does um so we'd have to see that but yeah that one's definitely an issue i'd agree with you third and long i would put your number two at number one the stupid and costly penalties in critical situations discipline 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 i think that is uh, uh paramount for this defense to improve is discipline because there were so many times where it was just un, undisciplined actions that absolutely upset uh, whatever they were doing. It was like all of a sudden there'd be, and it is an aggressive style defense. It's go get the quarterback, put the quarterback on his ass so he can't beat you standing up. I totally, totally respect that, that mentality. Um, but with that aggressive nature, sometimes comes lax and discipline where you do, you're trying to go get that quarterback and, and put him on his back and you go in there too hard. And you get a rough in the pass, or you get a helmet with the helmet, or what have you. I just think more care in the discipline aspect of it, um, and even in coverage, you know, the the pass coverage um, um, discipline with with PIs and everything. I think is is huge. That's going to be that was my biggest knock on this defense last year. Um, it definitely wasn't effort or aggression or anything like that. It was it was uh, the penalties, just not being not being sound in certain situations but yeah oh yeah my third one to round out the top i would say so we talked about third and long and we talked about uh um i think it's interceptions you know because we saw it in the bowl game when they had five interceptions and they and they absolutely controlled that game and i'm pretty sure i'd have to go back and check that was more interceptions than the whole year combined i think i remembered that seeing that after the game I think they had four interceptions all year and they had five in the bowl game. If I have that right, I'll have to go back and check. Um, but it was two pick sixes by Holloway. Remember that? What a time. Uh, but it's, they need more interceptions. They, they'd have some, they'd be opportunistic with some some fumbles that a lot of forced fumbles and, and they didn't always recover them, but they did get a lot of fumble recoveries. But you can't, you can't lean on that. It's harder to, to get a fumble than it is to to get an interception because a fumble that means the guy running the ball has to really screw up now obviously with an interception you're like well the guy throwing the ball has to have screwed up too right well, well there's ways to trick that and you know, with coverages where they you can make them think the guy's open as soon as they let the ball go then you're there ready to pick it so you have you have a little bit more control as a db i would say and maybe that's opinionated but I, I would say so just getting those getting those interceptions, doing what you can to get more interceptions. And I think it's it's harder to get those interceptions in man coverage. As much as I, I respect man coverage, 
I prefer zone. Maybe that's personal preference. Uh, I just feel like it's it's nice to have checks and balances instead of just one on one. One guy is covering this guy. I like I like that there's levels that they have to beat. It's not just yeah, I have to beat that guy. You have to beat this section and the guys that are manning that section. So, um, but yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting to see for for Dexter McCoyle. But uh, let's see if he can clean up that discipline, get him off the field on third and long, get more interceptions. You know, and if this if that defense is doing that paired with the offense that GJ and Mac are going to put together, it's going to be lights out. It's going to be a fun season. But oh my goodness, this has been an, an extra long pod. It's been way long. So let's get we'll get through the outro really fast, really, really fast. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash win now or get bent. Lots of cool stuff coming. Reese Largen, as I told you, we're going to have a new writer on there and everything. So check that out. WNOGB wnogb.com get all our cool merch check me out i'm wearing the hat if you're watching on the youtube channel when now we get bent on youtube you can see me in that awesome hat if you are watching on the youtube channel make sure you like subscribe comment all that good stuff start an account for a friend whatever you got to do to help us grow appreciate all you sickos out there uh, make sure you follow us on x twitter whatever you want to call it at when now get bent on instagram at wnogb thank you to tgc thank you to chillsy.com Thank you to the wizard, Zachary Webb, my guy, my guy. Thank you to Reese Largent. Can't wait for things to come on. Our, our new beat reporter, Reese Largent. Uh, and thank you to you sickos for, for hanging in there and being patient, especially with the job search and everything. Appreciate y'all still being around, tuning in and everything. Uh, big things, big things coming for, for win now or get bent. But all right, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. More awesome content coming. More, more coming down the pipeline stuff this week. We're going we're gonna to be hitting it hard. Signing day on Wednesday, we'll have some good stuff for you. Look out for all of that. But all right, everybody. Win now. Or get bent. <laughs> <laughs>